Right, hello everyone. I'm in Japan, so konnichiwa. What a beautiful place, Tokyo. I landed this morning, and these are the pajamas in the bedroom. So I thought I would come fully culturally cultured up from Japan to jump on and talk about the breaking news that Jordi Barrett is off to Leinster, which is mega, absolutely mega. So it's doing the rounds on social media. He's got a six month deal from Christmas till the end of the season. And it's a mega signing. And I just wanted to get into a kind of few details about it because they do call me the hype man in rugby. I might come across as the hype man. I'm not meant to be, but I'm pumped. I'm pumped for him. I'm pumped for my mate Leo, who's coaching Leinster. Uh, it's amazing for the URC. It's amazing for the Champions Cup. It's amazing for the profile of the game because think players like Geordie Barrett, uh, and any All Blacks don't come over to the UK and Ireland anymore because they go to Japan, right? That's where the money is. I'm here. I'm here actually in Japan. I'm interviewing them this week. So you don't get to have contact with them. To get a global superstar like Geordie Barrett signing for, yes, the very best team, top of the league in the URC, uh, into the semi finals, a home semi final of the Investec Champions Cup. So why do Leinster need someone like Geordie Barrett? They don't. They don't, but they can. And that's the thing for me. I want rugby to go down this direction of embracing these kind of headline news, headline superstars coming into our game. And, you know, the pod, rugby pod comes out today and where I was talking a little bit about it with Courtney Law. It's like Leinster, people are saying, well, you know, Leinster the best team, but they haven't won the Champions Cup in years, bloody, bloody, blah, and all this. No, but they've been there or thereabouts, so that still puts them as one of the best teams in the world. And when I talk about Leinster before, some of the Irish fans and some of the Leinster fans get a little bit annoyed with me. They get a bit pissed because I talk about the salary cap. There clearly is no salary cap in the URC. We do know that. So teams can spend and they can invest how they like. The difference is with Leinster is that most of the best players are centrally contracted. Obviously, Dan Sheehan has just re-signed on a central contract. That then opens... I suppose, budget, if you want to call it budget, within the Leinster ranks. RG Snyman fits under that as well, who's a monster of a signing as well. So from where I'm stood and sat here in Japan, where all the superstars come to play to cash in, to get Jordi Barrett coming to play at Leinster on a six-month deal is going to be mega. And you actually look at the profile of the team. I'm going to name drop the Leinster team that I put out on social media yesterday. And just listen to the names. Okay, so you've got Andrew Porter, freak athlete. Dan Sheehan, freak athlete. Ronan Kelleher on the bench, freak athlete. You've got Ty Furlong, athlete. You've got Tupo coming from Australia, athlete as well. And then you go down the ranks because the Achilles heel of Leinster and the conversations had around them is that they've struggled for size. Joe McCarthy, RG Snyman with a James Ryan on the bench. Ryan Beard, freak athlete. Josh van der Fleer, Will Connors, Caleb Miel Doris. And then you've got Jameson Gibson Park, who's probably the best nine in the world right now. You've got Ross or Harry Byrne. You've got a James Lowe. You've got a Geordie Barrett or a Jamie Osborne, who's a freak in the centre. You've got a Gary Ringrose, Jimmy O'Brien, Jordan Lama, Hugo Keenan, Keenan Frawley. The names, mega, absolutely mega. So it's a tip of the hat, it's a tip of the slipper to Leo, to Jacques Nienaba, to the CEO at Leinster, who I had a good chat with at Leicester back in the day. It's investment. You need to invest in the sport, in the game, in your team, because this isn't all about winning Champions Cups and winning URC titles. This is about winning the hearts and minds of the fans and the community. And we've seen Leinster over the last couple of weeks, that's what they've done. So in the round of 16, and in the quarterfinal at the weekend, both in Dublin, because that's how they were seeded, they got nearly 100,000 for fans. Nearly 100,000 fans in a seven-day turnaround. Like, it's mega. And we talk about rugby's dying, rugby's in a, in a bad spot. It is in pockets of the world. It is in England, to a degree. They've managed to sort themselves out. Um, it's not in France. It's not here in Japan. Yes, pockets of super rugby, it is. Top level, it's not. Internationally, all the stadiums are sold out. The World Cup, all the games were sold out. So this is absolutely wicked. It's a massive coup for us in the media doing podcasts. It's a massive coup for the URC, like I said, like the Champions Cup. And, 
yeah, I just think rugby as a whole to get someone like Geordie Barrett. He's obviously got history in Dublin. We saw the st- stuff around the his announcements that his dad came here a few years ago with what they got ten kids, ten Barretts. They've got a good few. Um, when you talk about rugby, you talk about the All Blacks. Yes, there's these kind of dynasty players, isn't there? Of um, I, I say dynasty is probably the wrong word, but you know what I mean, like Jonah Lomu's, Richard McCaws, your Dan Carters, your Kieran Reeds, uh, your Sam Whitelocks, your Mills um, the the kind of headline players. But in this modern day, it's the Barrett boys. So you've got Bowden, you've got Scott, and you've got his brother Geordie as well, who are three All Blacks. Imagine being his parents. Imagine their parents of how proud they are. So this is wicked. It's wicked for Jamie Osborne. People are talking about, well, where, where does Jamie Osborne fit in this? Just to reiterate, it's a six-month deal. You know, Jamie Osborne could be with Ireland. You know, you've got Robbie Henshaw, who I didn't even mention, into that mix as well. You know, Geordie Barrett's a player that can play in at 12, at 13, across the bat three. He can play at 10. Is he the missing link that Leinster need to go on and win a Champions Cup? Arguably, no. Is RG Snyman? Yes, I think so, if fit, because you need these big balls. And that's the big thing around Leinster, just to go back on that, like digging a little bit deeper into it, chatting to people close to Leinster, within Leinster. They've lacked a little bit of size. And what Jacques Nienab has come in and done, and firstly on that, the humility that someone like Leo Cullen, who for me is an absolute legend, has showed by bringing someone like Jacques Nienaber in. He did the same with Stuart Lancaster. You've seen it in other jobs before. Jordan Murphy at Leicester. You bring in a Steve Borthwick. Steve Borthwick ends up taking his job. So it's a risky move for someone like Leo to bring a Jacques Nienaber in, double back-to-back World Cup winner. Anyone who's seen Chasing the Sun 2 could just see what an epic coach he is, how he motivates his players. So what a ballsy move, a, a a, a move around humility to make his team better, to make Leinster a team that Leo Cullen uh, is a legend at and obviously is the head man at. So brilliant to bring Jacques Nienaber in. And what does that bring when you bring someone like Jacques Nienaber in? It brings a mindset of winners. And you look at the way in which Leinster are now playing, especially the way they played against La Rochelle, the physicality they show to man Mark Will Skelton, uh, the fact that they have with Ty Furlong, that was his job, chatting to Bernard Jackman. He had one job, which was to man Mark Will Skelton, which isn't an easy task, obviously, but he did a fantastic job. But at the very highest level, and La Rochelle have showed the Achilles heel of Leinster, it's around their physicality. Now they've brought the line speed, they're getting off the line. Ryan Baird, the athleticism that he's brought to that team. And Jacques Nienaber picks out these quirks of these Leinster teams being in a system uh, and being in a very structured system from schoolboy all the way up to the, the national team to actually getting off the line and fucking monstering people. So they're going in the right direction. And someone like Geordie Barrett is just going to add to that. I mean, 50-odd caps for the All Blacks. If you get one cap for the All Black, you're a world-class player. So... Jordy Barrett, big shout out. I've messaged him to see if we can get him on the podcast or something like that or get close to him because you don't hear much off the All Blacks. They're quite closed off, albeit they're opening themselves up a bit. Apparently, Ardy Surveyor's pounding the roads for a YouTube channel down the road. So he's giving back. But Leinster got history of bringing in foreign imports, uh, influencers, and great players. Like, who stands out for me? Rocky Elsom. He's a standout one for me. He came in, did a fantastic job. Um, Ethan Nathwewa, Nathwewa, I think I've said it right. Apologies, he's a legend. Met him before as well. Nathan Hines is another one. But look at the likes of James Lowe, who's come in as a Kiwi. Yes, there was obviously this play to play for Ireland. Could have played for the All Blacks. He was very close. Jameson Gibson Park as well. So there's a few. But it's absolutely amazing. Amazing for rugby. Amazing for Leinster, amazing for the URC, the Champions Cup. I do feel a little bit for Munster and for Connor and obviously Ulster. It's, I don't know, it's one of them where if you're a team like Leinster and you are centrally funded and you've got the schools programme which produces the best talent in Ireland, then they disperse across Ireland as they come through the academy and there's probably not enough room to fit them on the roster at Leinster. Um, a team like Ulster, who are struggling, as we know, they're losing the headline sponsor of the Kingspan. The CEO's gone, the coach is gone, the marquee player's gone. So there's a lot of stuff happening in there. Ulster's got one marquee player, I believe, in Ian Henderson. But this is all about Leinster. And I always say you need to invest in sport. People don't like talking about it in rugby. I don't know why. I've got no idea why. It's almost like an embarrassment. There's an anger around investing in rugby. 
but that's what sport is. Sports, media, entertainment is controlled by money and by investment. And when you're producing the players that Leinster have, continue to do, you hear about the programmes they've got there, they've got the best, one of the best coaches in the world in Andy Farrell. The fact that you lose Johnny Sexton as a team, you don't miss a beat. You get knocked out in the quarterfinals around some very close, controversial decisions and you come into the Six Nations, you win it, you don't miss a beat and your central team to that is top of the URC, have got a home semi-final at Croke Park in the Champions Cup. Something's going right in Ireland. So I'm very jealous in a good way. It's a good jealousy. But a superstar stack team that Leinster is, they've just added a global superstar to that in Geordie Barrett. He's going to be there from December to the end of the season. So hopefully he stays fit and hopefully we see him running out for Leinster. They've, they're redeveloping the RDS, I believe, as well. So things are going there. Things are going well there. So big shout out, Leo Cullen, you, the coaches, the CEO and the players, a superstar team. Come on, rugby. Let's carry on in this, guys, and get the very best players playing in the Northern Hemisphere.